Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Right Torian. And Jinx here. And welcome to Boulder's Gate 3 on the PlayStation 5. So, we're going to be doing a co op split screen series. We had intended to do this on the PC, but had a lot of problems with the launch version on PC just for split screen. Uh, it was like crashing all the time and uh, just wasn't very stable and it wasn't reacting to the second controller being picked up or being plugged in. So, lots of problems with the initial version on PC. And so yeah, we're doing this on the PlayStation 5. We've got a little story going, a little backstory for our characters. We have a role-playing adventure. Yeah, we're going to be a little couple in a big world. <laughs> uh, so we will be playing on the balanced. Uh, Explorers you know, made a lot more easier. Also, it does lock off certain features uh, like uh, multi-classing and stuff. Uh, so keep that in mind if you decide to go with the Explorer routes. Uh, but it is a much easier experience. Tactician is supposed to be really, really challenging. So I always play on balance, which I do have quite a bit of experience in the game. I think Steam has me clocked with 240 hours between uh, the full version and the early access. Uh, so I've been playing it a lot since it came out. Jinx has not, though. Nope. I just started a game a while back when it came out on PC, but I haven't really played much. I think Jinx has, what, like eight hours? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, eight hours in her playthrough, so has not played as much as I have. Uh, but this is the console version, so I've never played with a controller. I've only played with the mouse and keyboard, so there's going to be a little bit of a learning experience there. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and jump on into it. There's going to be a cutscene here in the beginning, kind of introducing the story, and then we'll be creating our characters. Alright, so you see we're already starting out here in the split screen, and uh, it's very similar when it comes to the split screen to Larian's previous game, uh, Divinity Original Sin 2, which we also did a split screen uh, series for. Had a lot of fun with that. We're going to both be playing custom characters, but in just in case you're not familiar with this game, there are origin characters, which start out with their own little story. And so there's several of them and these would be your companions they'll be your companions in the game if you don't choose to play as them with the exception of the dark urge uh, i do want to recommend to not play the dark urge uh, if this is your first campaign because it's very very different uh, and i don't know i just feel like it's not a good a good one to start with because it's such a different uh play style you're well you could read that there you're a nasty creature yeah <laughs> And so I think uh, it, it, you won't be able to contrast what has changed, what is different. You won't even know how this playthrough is so different because you haven't done a normal one. So I suggest that you either play as an origin character or a custom. Though really, custom character I think is the best way to go for uh, your first playthrough. 
Just be yourself. So a lot different than Divinity where, you know, it was better to, to play as one of the, the origin characters so that you got that extra story. And this one I think is best to play as a custom. Maybe try Origin for your second playthrough. Uh, so let's move to our race. So I'm going to be playing as a dwarf. And I'm going to be a gnome. We'll talk about our backstory in a minute. Let's first get these couple of choices selected, and then we'll discuss that as we do our uh, actual appearance. Wait, I'm going to be a dwarf that results in the, the slower speed. All the, the shorter characters have the slower speed, but we do have the dwarven combat training, which gives us proficiency with all these weapons. The dwarven resi uh, resilience, so that's an advantage on saving throws against poison, and resistance to poison damage, so we take only half damage from poison. And then we got the dark vision, so we can see up to 40 feet in the dark. I don't have dark vision. Maybe because you're playing as a forest gnome? Maybe. And so what are you getting? You obviously have the slower speed, but yeah, you also I'm have... Cunning. So advantage on intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws. So now we're going to move to our sub-race. Just to show you guys all the different races, though, for those of you who somehow are not familiar with this game at this point, there's a lot of them. A whole bunch of different race choices. Oh, I guess I do get dark vision. It's just under the sub race. Because mm, probably one of the gnomes doesn't get it. Maybe the rock gnomes, or whatever they're called. The deep gnomes. Oh, superior. Because they get the superior. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. So that's why they did it that way. All right, so as far as our sub race, we have three choices for the dwarfs. The gold dwarf, the shield dwarf, and the dwegar. So the dwegar are the ones who live in the underdark. But we're not going to play as the Dwager. We're going to be playing as a Gold Dwarf. Well, a Shield Dwarf does look more like me as far as my skin color. Can't I, see your face. <laughs> yeah. I don't really like the bonuses here. You just get armor pro proficiency that I'm already going to have with the class that I'm going to select. So really no bonus there. While with the oops, the Gold Dwarf, we're going to get extra uh, hit points. A lot of extra hit points. Because you're tough. Yeah, that's one uh, for every level, so at the max level you have 12 extra hit points, which doesn't seem like a lot, but generally you only get around most classes somewhere between, I don't know, 80 to maybe 120 hit points. So that's quite a bit, actually. So yeah, we're going to do the, the Gold Dwarf. Jinx is going to be the forest, the forest Gnome. Yep, Forest Gnome. So that gives her the ability to speak with animals. And Dark Vision. And she gets the Dark Vision. As far as our class here, I'm going to be a paladin. So I've never played as a paladin, nor have I had a paladin uh, companion, because there's only one paladin companion in the game, if you don't count the hirelings. And uh, it's, you only get that, that paladin if you're, if you're evil. You go down the bad, bad guy route. So I got her in an early access playthrough, but you don't actually get to use her. So I've never uh, used a paladin in this game, so it's going to be a, a new experience for me. It's supposed to be the most powerful class as well. It's at the very least the most popular class. So I've played as a sorcerer, a ranger, and a barbarian. So I never played it as a paladin. Jinx is going to be a bard. Yeah, I'm going to be <laughs> up to no good. Uh, what uh, what class are you playing with in your playthrough? Uh, I'm a cleric. A cleric. Yeah. A cleric of like Saluna or something like that? Yeah, Saloon. So our abilities are lay on hands, so I'll be able to heal, divine sense, the, the channel oak charges is kind of the paladin special ability here, and then all these proficiencies. And then Jinx, she has to actually choose her abilities, but you do have the, uh, you know, the bardic inspiration. I'm definitely going to be insulting people. <laughs> yeah, you got to get that one. I think it fits, fits Jinx. And I'm going to tell really great jokes. And people won't be able to help themselves laughing. All right, so we get to pick our subclass right away as a paladin. Most classes have to wait until like level two or three to pick their subclass. But uh, with a paladin, you have an oath as a big part of your game because the oath dictates the decisions you're supposed to be making. If you want to keep your oath, if you violate your particular oath, then you become an oath breaker, which is a, like a hidden subclass. And say so yeah, we have three different oaths. Just kind of hover over these so you can see what they are. The Oath of the Ancients. The Oath of Devotion, which is your typical knight. And then the Oath of Vengeance, which is the one that we're going to 
we're going to play as here, guys. So fight the greater evil, exerting your wisdom, identify the higher morality in any given instance, and fight for it. No mercy for the wicked, chasten those who do out their villainy by wiping their blight from the world forever. And so we have to stick to that oath if we don't want to become an oath breaker. And then we start with the Inquisitor's Might, giving us that two radiant damage and can daze enemies for one turn. So Jinx here, you don't get to pick a subclass, but you get to pick some cantrips, which are spells you can use all the time. Which ones are you selecting? I'm going with Vicious Mockery and the Minor Illusion. Okay, so that'll allow you to like uh, distract people. Mm -hmm. The Vicious Mockery, that's the, the special skill for the Bard. I think that's the one where they added in like hundreds of different insults into the game, like unique insults. For like, you'll shout out on the battlefield. <laughs> yeah, based on like who the character is or their race or whatever, their class. So that'll be interesting. So yeah, Jinx will get the two cantrips and then you also get to select spells, right? Yup. Gonna be healing. So she will be our, our party's primary healer. I don't know what spells I'm gonna pick though. Okay, well we'll take a look at the dwarf's background here. So the background has two major effects, really. The first is the one you see below here. It gives you the two extra skill proficiencies. So it just makes you better at those, those skills when it comes to the die roll. And the other one is it determines how you get inspirations. Inspirations allow you to re-roll. You can have up to four of them at a time. Once you get four, then any other further inspirations are wasted. And just allows you to, to re-roll. And so each of these will get inspirations in different ways. So it kind of determines what you should be focusing on in your playthrough. But these do not, so far I haven't seen it at all, and I'm almost, almost completely beaten this very, very long game. I'm like 130 hours in a playthrough, and I still haven't yet finished the game because it's ridiculously long. But I have never seen these have any effect in dialogue. So it won't actually determine you know, what you're able to say Nobody will ever reference your background or anything like that, unlike in uh, Divinity or uh, some other RPGs. It's really just determined for your inspirations. So you don't need to worry about it actually, like, gelling with your character. You should only, you know, base it off of the skill proficiencies and that inspiration. So I'm going to be a, uh, a soldier here. That's going to give us proficiency in athletics and intimidation. I think it fits with our paladin. I'm going to be a charlatan. I'm a thief and a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Which we'll go into the backstory here and kind of explain why Jinx, why Jinx is going to be the charlatan. Uh, what did you pick for your uh, your spells and your instrument? I've got Healing Word, Cure Wounds, Tasha's Hideous Laughter, and Speak with Animals. So does your race not actually give you the, the Speak with Animals? No, I think it just gives me the access to the spell. Oh, well that's unfortunate. Yeah. They gotta use a spell slot to get it. All right. So those will be Jinx's skills. Should very much gonna be our our healer here. And then your instrument that you're gonna start with. I picked the lute because I'm a rock star. <laughs> She's gonna be rocking out. Yeah. So the uh, bard or whoever has uh, the proficiency in instruments, you can play any of them. This is just the one you start with. You'll find them all over the place, so you're not locked into whatever, whatever instrument you select here. So Jinx will be able to pick up the drums a little bit later if she wants to or something like that. And then we got our background selected, so now we need to distribute our ability points here. And so with the, uh, with the paladin, it's kind of difficult because there's a lot of skills that they use. Obviously, you're going to use the, the strength for your weapon. Unless you decide to go with a dexterity-based weapon, which we will not be doing. And so you got to have the high strength. You also want the constitution for the health. Don't really need intelligence or wisdom. But you got to have the charisma because that's what your spells use. And in addition to that, it's always great to have charisma for like, uh, you know, earning more money when you buy and sell to merchants because you know, that'll affect the prices and then also for the dialogue very helpful to have the charisma points so you kind of got to distribute these points between three different key attributes here and so what we're going to do is we're going to dump dexterity completely because we're going to use uh heavy heavy armor and therefore we're not going to get any bonuses from dexterity anyways and you also don't get the penalty i believe 
uh, from having the, the level 8 dexterity, which would normally give you a negative 1. But I believe that the heavy armor will nullify any bonus or penalty from your dexterity. So we're just going to completely dump that. So we put another point into constitution here. And then, I don't want to be stupid, so we'll put, <laughs> we'll put intelligence up to 10. We'll just leave these at 10 so we don't get any penalties from them. And that looks pretty solid, though you generally don't want to have odd numbers because in this game, and I think it's this way in D&D as well, I don't really know d and I've never played it, but I think it's this way in the, uh, the tabletop game too, is that it's only in the even numbers that you actually get the bonus. And so there's really no reason to have odd numbers unless you just don't have uh, anywhere else to put the points. And so I think we might reduce strength and then put the point into charisma instead. So we're at the even numbers. And that'll give us a plus three for strength, a plus three for charisma, because it starts at 10, you have no uh, bonus, 12 will give you one and so on. And then uh, a plus two for, for constitution here. And then you have the uh, the bonuses down here. We're gonna leave as, these as is. This is just a plus two for one of these and a plus one. And we already have that applied up there. It's like, how are you just as charismatic as me? <laughs> because I'm a very charismatic paladin, Jinx. So what is your character gonna look like? Um, totally weak, scrawny, <laughs> nimble, have okay health. I'm not stupid. <laughs> I'm not wise either. <laughs> but charismatic. So basically we have very similar characters. Our constitution and, and charisma are the same as well as our intelligence and wisdom. Yeah, the we just only have difference, dexterity and strength switch. Yeah, is that our, our strength and dexterity are flip-flopped. So I'll be using the larger uh, two-handed weapons with the heavy armor, while Jinx is going to be using light armor. I don't think she'll be able to use anything else. No. Unless she picks uh, certain subclasses. Because I think the College of Valor and the College of Swords allows you to get medium armor but jinx is going to be going with the college of lore so she'll be using light armor and uh, dexterity based weapons so that's like ranged weapons or any dexterity uh melee weapons which are uh, i think they'll say f finesse on them and that means they use your dexterity instead of your strength and so that's really the only difference here we are very similar Two to each other in a tiny pod yep <laughs> uh now we need to select our skill proficiencies here which is probably fine as is, because I don't have very many choices. Religion, insight, medicine, and persuasion. So we're gonna keep persuasion and insight, guys. The only changes that I'm gonna make is I'm gonna take away intimidation, because I'm not very intimidating, and I'm gonna put that into acrobatics. Okay, that makes sense. And so the what's the other two that you have? I don't wanna be pushed. Yeah, the, the pushing is dangerous. Yeah. Ooh, push you <laughs> like right tiny. off a cliff. Well, because we're light as well, because we're smaller, it's easier to push us. So yeah, persuasion and performance. Okay, yeah, you definitely want to have that performance since that impacts uh, your ability to play the instrument. Put on a show, make some money. Mm hmm. All right, so those are our skill proficiencies, and now we can move into our appearance here, guys. And let's do this voice first. Be wary. It's opened. I want more of... There's magic keeping this chest sealed. I can feel its aura. What? Hmm. What was that? So this is the voice we're going to go with for my character, voice seven. I'm just going with two. Okay. Uh, so you can change your, your body type. That's where you have the feminine or the masculine body type. And your identity is separate from that. So that would be... Basically, the way you're referred to uh, when it comes to your pronouns. And our face, we're going to select this guy here. Can I get any closer? No, this is as close as we can get. So this is going to be our face here. You grumpy old man. Yeah. <laughs> so I was going to go with this one, but his nose is just way too big. This guy's nose is like monstrous. So we're going to go with this one. It's a beautiful dwarven nose. <laughs> we're going to go with this one. I think it fits uh, the, the background for our characters a little bit better as well. So the background is going to be, uh, Jinx and I met in a small town. Met in a tiny village. Yep. And uh, we fell in love with me and my charm. Yep. And, and I'm attracted to grumpy animals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And my guy is extremely hairy. You guys won't be able to see that, but if you take your, your character's clothes off, 
what you can do down here. We won't do that because YouTube would flip out. <laughs> so we already know what genitals we're going to be selecting here. I'm going to have the genitals five. <laughs> just so you can look it up yourself <laughs> yeah. if you're just curious. If you're curious what my guy's packing. Uh, so if you take your clothes off, you'll see these, these dwarfs, as you'd expect, are incredibly hairy. Except for their butts. Yeah. They got baby butts, which is weird. It's weird. They shave their butts. Because there's no way it's, <laughs> you know, that uh, bare naturally. I don't believe it. We don't need to select maturity because our character's already grizzled here. And it doesn't actually have any effect, which is interesting. He's as grizzled as it gets. Yeah, he's already as mature as it gets here. I'm not seeing any effect. And I'm just not noticing it. Anyway, I'm a I'm an older guy, uh, a paladin, who's been devoted to his oath for his entire life, and he's starting to question his oath a little. And a big part of that is because of his relationship with the Jinx here. Who's a mess, I'm just out for a good time. So Jinx stole from a temple in our town, and I insulted. The town leader's wife. Yeah. In a way so grisly <laughs> and horrific <laughs> that it shan't be repeated. And so we were kicked out of our town. And so now we're on the road, traveling, trying to find somewhere else to, to call home. But in our town, Jinx was the, the town bard. I didn't say I was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> So maybe she'll have more success in the big city. And maybe there will be some singing in this Let's Play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, I already got a haircut selected. I just gotta find it. We're gonna be using the, the Conqueror haircut, guys. Yeah, I've been devoted my oath my whole life, but Jinx has been maybe perhaps leading me down another route. That sounds familiar. Uh-huh. Kind <laughs> of fits. What happened in real life for us as well. <laughs> he just had it all figured out. <laughs> so, you know, we are older character. And so we're going to have, you know, not only this kind of grizzled look with the with the scar from our years of battle. We're also going to have some grays lying throughout our hair here. Not too intense, though. Very handsome. Mm-hmm. Uh, we will be changing up the, the beard, but you got to have a beard, right? As a... As a dwarf. So this would be an option here. I think we're going to go with this one. So not quite as uh, as wild. This one does kind of fit with the hair a bit, I suppose. But I already used this one in my Sorcerer playthrough. So we're going to go with this one instead. Just to have something a little bit different. Yeah, there's a lot of beard choices here. I'm glad they give you multiple options for beards. You generally don't see that in games. A lot of role-playing games, you get like maybe two beards. And that's it. Here they're they give usually you. not great either. Yeah, the facial hair is pretty good in this, though the animation for the facial hair, which looks nice as you're moving it here, it gets kind of weird in the cutscenes, kind of, you know, it like will fold up over your face and <laughs> I don't know, it just looks kind of weird. Know, that seems realistic, your beards have a mind of their own. In a way, sure, but it ends up breaking it a little bit. Sometimes it gets stuck like that. Oh, like stuck forever? Not forever, but for the rest of that cutscene. <laughs> It looks all strange. Like I can't take you. This is a very serious moment. Why are you acting like this beard? And so what's Jinx got going over here? This is me. Just a little cutie pie. You're going with the teal? Teal yeah. aquamarine, aquamarine hair? Yeah, I got mermaid hair. Okay. Just, you know, some subtle, subtle color here. No beard. No beard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pierce all my ears. So while Jinx finishes up her character here, i just just uh, finish talking about her background. But yeah, Jinx stole some items from the, the temple. And I she, like shinies, okay? Uh, yeah, that's going to be kind of one of uh, our role plays here for the series, is that Jinx can't keep her hands off of other people's shinies. I'm just going to go with the default genitals. <laughs> so yeah, that's me. And so, yeah, Jinx stole that item, and then she insulted the town leader's wife. And so we got kicked out of our town. We're on the road. And uh, my character is beginning to question his oath, which he is the Oath of Vengeance, which, of course, means that, uh, you know, it's kind of a more uh, ambiguous 
type of oath. You know, it's not quite as restricting as the other two oaths. Uh, but basically, we need to seek vengeance on all evildoers. And, and in general, you're still a good guy. But the longer that Jinx and I have been together, in the game, of course, not in real life, my character has been uh, questioning that oath and if he really feels as committed to it as he once did when he was young. He just doesn't feel that same devotion to it. And so maybe, depending on what happens in the playthrough, we might end up going with that uh, Oathbreaker. We'll just see what happens. Uh, but that's that, uh, that subclass, uh, the hidden subclass. You break your oath and then some very interesting things can happen there. So we'll see. We'll see what happens, guys. Uh, but yeah, this is our, our characters here. Uh, so I think we just review them now, right? Yep, and then we name them. So for our names, we're just going to be us. Praetorian and Jinx. Luckily, those are already in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have named many, many a character. And this the already. Jinx is the Jinx bill. <laughs> so next we need to make our guardians. Oh, goodness. More character creation. More character creation. So with this character, I'm not exactly sure how you should how to tell you how you should design this because it's a little bit different than it was in early access. Where in early access, it said, "Who do you dream of? You know, who are you attracted to?" So it was very much supposed to be like a character you're attracted to. Uh, in the full version of the game, I would say that's not uh, the case. They have changed up the Guardian quite a bit. In fact, you know, they're called the Guardian instead of being called the Dreamer. And so, yeah, it's it's very different. I would just say just design somebody that you would like protecting you. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really know what to tell you because I don't want to spoil anything for what who this character is. All right, so these are going to be our Guardians. We did not intentionally pick the same hairstyle it just happened that way and neither one of us are willing to change it right now because no, we just really like this hair it's cute it just took too <laughs> long to pick hairstyles but mine has red highlights hers has blue it's purple but okay or purple whatever <laughs> <laughs> so jinx has got a half elf uh, a wood half elf as a guardian i just picked a, a dwarf and uh this is what they're gonna look like I just don't want to have to look up at my guardian. Yeah. <laughs> I just want someone bigger than me protecting me. I guess that makes sense. Uh, but we both have ladies as guardians. The The voice for the, the female guardian is a lot better than the, the male one, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and venture forth. We're going to have another cutscene here, and uh, then we'll finally get to get into some gameplay here, guys. I think got to hold it.
Alright guys, so we are finally into the game here. At least I still have my loot. They didn't take our weapons or instruments from us. For whatever reason. So let's just take a look at the controls here. Because again, we've never played with the controller here, so... Very unfamiliar with it all. So it seems that R1 and L1 is how we access all of our abilities and items and all that good stuff. So they, they have a radio menu as they do in many of the console versions of these type of games. Not quite as good as what you get with the mouse and keyboard, but it's uh, suitable. It works. I don't know how else you'd do it, uh, do it on, a, on a console. And then we can access all of our different menus here with the R2. Okay, so let's just take a look see what we have equipped currently, what we're starting with. So I'm starting with medium armor, so we are going to need to upgrade that. That means that we are going to have a dexterity pen penalty until we get the uh, heavy armor. Uh, we've got our underwear here, very important part of the game. My underwear are terrible. <laughs> and then uh, some homely clothes here. That's what you wear in, in cam. Uh, but what's important is that we have the, the warhammer. Excellent. And they got us equipped uh, with a, a shield, and that is not how we'll be playing this, guys. Uh, we're going to be using a... I might just go ahead and get rid of the shield now, actually, so I can do more damage. Yeah, let's just go ahead and get rid of this. So let's unequip that. And that'll allow us to use the Warhammer with both our hands, so we'll do more damage since it's a, a versatile weapon. And yeah, we equip that. I just start out with the crossbow. Oh, you start out with a cross crossbow? Yeah, I don't have a melee weapon. Oh, interesting. Alright, I also start with these for throwing the javelins. Okay, so, yeah, we'll throw those. Yeah, we don't actually want to equip it, though. Alright, so that's what we start with. We also have the uh, one supply pack, which... I don't think we can send that to camp just yet, but generally you want to send all of your food items to camp. No reason to carry them with you because you only use them in camp. That's uh, for when you do your long rest, so you don't need to carry those on you. And so as soon as, as, soon as you get into the regular game, uh, past this tutorial area, just start sending it all to camp. I start out with a book of Haladin Oaths and their tenants. I'm going to go ahead and read that. Can you zoom in at all? This is kind of tiny. That is very tiny. Yeah. I mean, it is split screen. have to get your reading glasses out. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so that's... Oh, that's your oath. Yep, those are those. And of course, we have the Oath of Vengeance here, guys. So we're going to read that since it's important for how we play the game. Uh, villains, betrayers, oathless fiends. They lurk around every corner, preying on the vulnerable and twisting the world in their favor. You must twist a sword through their hearts. Every last one. You must be relentless. Your wrath cannot rest, for the wicked certainly won't. Okay. So let's go ahead and start moving around. It's a very different plan like this, because you actually are using the sticks to move around. Which is nice. <laughs> and when you're playing on PC, you know, it's a, a kind of click-based. Uh, what I like about this is that you feel more into the the game world because mm -hmm. you're you know zoomed into it and you really feel like you're a part of it. Where on mouse and keyboard, you're often playing much higher up. You can zoom in, but you rarely do. And you're playing up from a top view and then clicking around. So just a very different experience. All right, so we want to add that to our wares. Shinies. We got shinies. Jinx is getting excited. I'm gonna pick your pocket. <laughs> you can pick the pocket <laughs> of your friends. Jinx doesn't know how to do it though, luckily. <laughs> I mean, I could. I was just looking. Yeah. Just looking. And then these sphincters. Nice. Yeah, they're kind of like uh, you're basically running around in a in a ship that's kind of living, and uh, we're going through anuses essentially. That's nice. Mm-hmm. All right, so did you want to come up this way? All right, I suppose we can explore the area. Though you really feel the slowness of your character yeah, when you like, play. Oh, curse you tiny legs. Mm -hmm. A thousand years of humanoid history. Elves, dwarves, humans, and more flash behind your eyes. All right, so you use the directional pad to move around what you want to select. 
It's definitely going to take some getting used to here, guys. Oh, whoa. Don't press that. Up is for jumping on the directional pad, and down is how you sneak. You ready to go up here? Yes. I'm come in. So we need to get another companion here, guys. Somebody to join us on our playthrough. Or do we? <laughs> <laughs> to save us from this place. From this place you'll free us. The exposed brain quivers in expectation. Please, before they return. They return. A newborn. Born new from this husk. You realize you're talking to an intellect devourer. A minion of the Mind Flayers who abducted you. Remove us from this body! From this case! Free us! Please. So those are the bonuses that we can add to the rolls. I didn't actually mean to add the Bardic Inspiration because I think that'll use some of Jinx's Bardic Inspiration points. And so probably didn't want to use it here, uh, but I guess it's good to show how the, the bonuses work to affect your rolls, make it more likely that you'll you'll succeed. So essentially those bonuses are added on to whatever you roll. You notice edema, a swelling of the brain causing pressure where it strains against the shell of the skull. from the skull. But you notice an opportunity. You could cripple the strange creature, making it more subservient should it prove a threat. We are free. Our freedom is ours, friend. The creature pauses, listening. Something behind your eyes seizes in recognition. We must go to the helm! At the helm, we are needed. To the helm we go! We are going to the helm. Alright, so we got another companion. I love the baby. Named us. <laughs> it's a newborn. Alright, so let's go back down here. And yeah, that doesn't have to go down that way. You could, of course, kill the newborn, so therefore you wouldn't have access to it. Who knows what consequences it will have, though. Mm-hmm. You can also fell in all those rolls, so you can't uh, successfully get it in the first place. rush past. A dragon swing, a silver sword, and a flash of your face seen through the strange woman's eyes. Oh. <sighs> My head. What is this? <sighs> Squall. You are no thrall. 
Flacketh blesses me this day. Together, we might survive. Who am I? Your only chance of survival. We can do nothing until we escape. That must be our priority. First, we exterminate the imps. Then we find the helm and take control of the ship. As for that thing, it will remain tame as long as it believes we are thralls. It may be of use in the fight to come. So we're in our first battle, guys. So it looks like us gets the first turn. So we'll go smack this and put the claws. But yeah, what's interesting is that... Uh, let's see, we'll just move us towards this one here. What's interesting is that the second player doesn't seem to get any, uh, any say in the dialogue at all. Yeah, like there's not like a voting system like yeah. in the last one. I thought there was some type of voting system or something like that, but apparently that's not the case. So yeah, we're getting really good lucky rolls here, guys, and killing everything on the first hit. And so Jinx will be going next. And so the way that we're gonna do it for now is that I'm gonna control all the characters and Jinx is just going to control her own character. I'm just going to be me, chilling out in the party. And the reason for that is simply because I have so much more experience than Jinx says. Jinx has barely played the game at all. And also, we're hoping that we can work together a little bit more than we did in our Divinity Original Sin 2 series, where we're kind of both just doing our own things. And it didn't always result... In the best combat scenarios? Yeah, not really. Yeah, we had some difficulties because we weren't really communicating well enough and, like, uh, you know, working together. Yeah, and then, like, one character would, like, trigger events and the other would get stuck out of it. It was, it was kind of weird. Yeah, because we didn't stick together all the time, so we're going to try and stick together a lot more. Uh, you generally don't want to separate your, your group in this game anyways because combat's kind of difficult. There are some really difficult scenarios. And so it's best if you don't uh, separate your, your group too much. And so we're going to try and stick together. And uh, we'll also rotate, you know, who's talking. So Jinx will do a bit of talking as well. Uh, particularly to the animals, since she'll have the talk to animals spell. Um, so I want to see how to do... And we got to kind of just learn how to use the controller here. I want to see if I can reach this, this guy by jumping. And no, we would not have enough movement. So instead, we're probably going to have to throw something at him. <laughs> Our javelin. So we'll get a little bit closer here. And maybe... Can you zoom any more? There we go. Let's zoom in just a bit more here. And then we need to access our inventory. I don't know if there's any way to do it through here. Let me just take a look. No, there's not. Again, just kind of got to learn how everything works with the controller. Because, yeah, the entire UI is different from the uh, the mouse and keyboard version. I know one question we're gonna get a lot is can you hook up a mouse and keyboard and play with the console version? I don't know guys, because we never tried it, so. So we're gonna throw this javelin at the imp. All right, so did a bit of damage. Did you attack at all? Yeah, I did. I okay. killed the guy. Oh, okay. I shot him. I was over here jabbing. Right in the eye. Not paying attention. So it looks like the, the imp will only have the one turn. Now, one advantage to playing with the split screen here is that you have an extra character here in the beginning. Normally, you'd only have, uh, you know, if you got us, you'd have us, your own character, and Lizelle. So yeah, we'll get all these uh, characters looted here. All these enemies. Oh, you found a haste potion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really nice to have. I didn't I know there was the void bulbs. any haste potions. Yeah, you want to get as many of those as you can because you don't find them very often. Do you want this scimitar? Sure. So I guess I'll send that to you from my inventory. I already looted it. You might be able to just take it from me as well. We'll have to take a look at how that all works. 
So yeah, we're not going to get too, uh, too concerned with who's picking up what, guys. It's not like we're going to fight over it. Yeah. <laughs> we share everything in real life, too, so it's, we're used to it. Gold, I tell you. For those of you who might be new to the channel, Jinx and I have been married for a very long time. Oh, you can pick up your javelin. 16 years. Yeah, I'm trying to pick it up. I was looking for it. I just saw it. Let me just do the... There we go. Yeah, we'll go ahead and pick that up. Yeah, we want our javelin back. That's cool that you can pick it back up. Well, yeah, you can uh, you can throw any item. It doesn't have to be a javelin. Like You can go in your inventory and take any item that you have and chuck it at people. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, barbarians will get this ability where they can, as like an extra action, they can just throw stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and equip this crossbow since our character doesn't have a ranged weapon. And we're going to send this scimitar to Jinx. Let me see, this is a... Let me make sure that this is a... Yeah, it is a finesse weapon. So Jinx will be using her... Uh, oops, I don't want to equip that. She'll be using her dext uh, dexterity modifier for that. Send that to Jinx. Got it. Alright, so I think we're good to go here. I did want to take a look at Lysel. So we can now play as her, run around as her character. Is she wearing ass chaps? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. She's got Ew, ass chaps. Get Yankee booty. <laughs> uh, let's just see what she's got equipped. I almost want to snatch her heavy armor, but I don't really want the ass chaps. So, oh, she's got medium armor. Okay, she doesn't start with the heavy armor. It's just very shiny. Mm-hmm. There is a heavy armor equivalent of the, uh, the get Yankee. It's like full plate. Then she has the long sword. I'm not sure if we'll have her use. I almost want to have her use like a sword and shield since I'm already rocking the the two handed. The two handed. So make her more uh, defensive. Yeah, you know what? Let's do that actually. We're gonna equip the shield on her, so we got a little bit uh, something different here. And she's got the short bow equipped as well. I want to pet us. <laughs> what happens if you talk to us? Can you not talk to him? No. no. Yeah, I guess we'll go ahead and pick all this up. I didn't like to put that in the wares. So we can just sell it real quick. Alright, so let's heal. You'll find these all over this uh, tutorial map and they'll, they'll heal you up. And there's a rapier if you'd prefer that. Yeah. I'll go ahead and send that to you. I don't know which one will do more damage. We can take a look at it. And there's also a short sword also on that too as well. And just let you equip whichever one you like better. I'll take the rapier. Let me see if this is worth picking up. I don't remember how much you could sell that. Yeah, it's just simple robe here. Do some fencing. All right, so I'm gonna throw it off where we're at here because the whole map looks different for me. Yeah. Just with the split screen? Yeah, with the split screen, so everything's very small. And then, I mean, I guess it's on the big screen TV, so it's it's bigger than it is on the computer. Oh man, I had to wait for you to get all the way up before it would let me use it. <laughs> yeah, yep. Alright, so let's go through the next anus. Touch the spine. And move on. Okay. So I, I want to say, I don't recall which one it, it is. It's been a while since I played this beginning area here. I'm trying to select, you can't really tell what you have selected. Yeah, I think you gotta zoom out a little bit to see which one's highlighted. All right, so we want, it's the right one. And that'll kill, kill these uh, sacrifice cultists. So we don't have to fight them? Oh, I fought them in mine. Oh, did you? Yeah. Yeah, if you push the right button there, then you just kill them. I was scared to push buttons. I didn't know what they did. Well, if you pass the arcana check there, then you'll know what, what they do. All right, so there's another character over here in this Mind Flayer pod. And so let's go ahead and interact with her. I'm trying to figure out who would be best for interacting with it. I think probably the paladin. 
Yeah, because you're strong. Yeah, I don't know if he'll get the ability to, to rip it open like a barbarian. We'll, we'll see, guys. You! Get me out of this damn thing! We have no time for stragglers. The construction is too alien. Nothing looks familiar. This ship is crashing. Do you intend to die for a stranger? Try that contraption next to the pod. They did something to it when they sealed me in. Hurry! Please! Okay. So we did not get a special interaction here as the, the Paladin. I know the Barbarian does. The, the Sorcerer, I think, does as well. A couple other classes might. Uh, but it can be a lot easier to open this up at certain classes. Uh, so we'll go ahead and interact with this here. The console appears dormant. The mechanisms are completely unrecognizable at first, but then you spy an empty socket. Nothing. The console remains dormant. So punching it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're just gonna run around smacking things. I did think about playing as a barbarian for our Let's Play, guys, but decided against it. Uh, so we're looking for the the that wrong door, stone. which is that one over there. Did you want to lockpick this for us, Jinx? Do I have any lockpicks? Oh, you know what? Yeah, no, we, do we don't have not. any thieves tools, so we will have to get the key from it. You know, I picked up all these brain thingies my first time through. You know, the dark minds and, you know, the little brains inside the green thing. I have yet to find anywhere where that's useful. Yeah, I still have those. Yeah, I have, like, a bunch of them. Faint images appear in your mind. A brain, a Githyanki warrior, and centuries of darkness. Alright, so this is what we're looking for, this gold key here. That'll let us open that up. And then, yeah, we'll just put the scimitar. Are you going to dual wield weapons? No. You're just going to use one? Yeah. Okay. Then we'll just uh, add that to the wares. A dazed woman is trapped inside the pod. She doesn't notice you. So what we need is back here and this character. Ooh, what a pretty necklace. Then yeah, we'll go ahead and add that to the wares. And now we've gotten the rune. And so that'll allow us to open up that mind flare pod back there. So if we want to see what happens with her, we have to interact with, yeah, with this over here. As you place your hand on the pod, you hear something. A presence connected to the pod, commanding the person inside to change. at the pull of a lever. How? If we are not purified, this may be our fate. So probably shouldn't just go pushing random buttons. That's what I said. <laughs> That's why I don't go around pushing buttons. I'm scared. Might turn me into a mind player. But that's what we've got inside our heads right now, guys. The, the tadpole that eventually turned you into one of those monstrous... Don't you have the key for the chest? Oh yes, yes, we do have the key here. We can go and loot that real quick. But yeah, you feel so slow in this view. <laughs> yeah. Like I always noticed like how slow my character was. I'm moving around, wishing that they could go a little bit faster, like there's a sprint or something. But you really notice it down here. Yeah, it's like we're doing the granny shuffle. Uh -huh. Yeah, airborne shuffle. Actually, we don't need to interact no, wait. with her again we need to use this here 
the console appears dormant. The console hums to life. But what is its purpose? Will it free the captive or transform her like that other unfortunate? Nothing in the appearance of the device betrays its purpose. It could do anything. It could even transform the occupant of the pod, like what happened before. Suddenly, you feel a hideous squirming in your head. The parasite. Then discomfort fades, and another sensation washes over you. Connection. Authority. You feel the biomechanical brain of the console process your command and yield to it. A shiver runs across your mind. You feel sated. thing was going to be my coffin. Thank you. Your mind lurches into her thoughts. Her gratitude is mixed with wariness, because you have a gith with you. You keep dangerous company. Fair point. Looks like there's plenty of fighting ahead. Let me come with you. We can get off this ship and watch each other's backs along the way. I did. It must be because of those parasites they put in us. But that'll have to wait. Are we going to help each other or not? Shadowheart. One moment. It's nothing. Trust me. Enough of this chatter. We need to get to the helm. Now. She's right. Lead on. Well, I was hesitant about letting her join the group. I didn't know she was half elf. <laughs> and so, yeah. So we, racist. We now got our fourth party member here, guys. And so, what we did with the. When we played Divinity, is that. That's the wrong way here. Uh, we had Jinx controlling two characters, and I controlled two. And maybe that's something we'll rotate to as Jinx learns the game more. Uh, as she plays uh, her own playthrough, which she's going to be starting on the console here. Tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Jinx is really excited because she has not got to play the PC version much. Again, only about eight hours. And I'm loving We're it so far. Head. Once inside, do as I say. Who put you in charge? I'll trust my own judgment. Kane Yank. So they, uh, as you can see, they don't get along. That's a big theme of the beginning of the game here. These characters do not like each other. Uh, this is interesting. I don't think this was in uh, the game before. Yeah. I yeah, know. that you ask you to, uh, Are press yes to enter the helm. deal with the geek after we escape. Connect the nerves. Nerves. We will connect them. Alright guys, so we are in a battle here. We need to get out of here. Tell you what, the it looks like it's your turn. The game looks amazing on the big screen. Yeah it does. Because you know our monitor is an okay size on our computer, but it's not 55 inches. So how are you gonna how are you gonna approach this, Jinx? 
gonna shoot. Shoot him. Well, you shoot. could use that bardic inspiration that you have to sing a song for us. Wouldn't that improve one, one character? I'm not entirely sure how your bardic inspiration works. So it's not in there. I think it's to the right over there. No, no, uh, to the right in that last radio menu. Oh, right there. Yeah, so this inspires an ally with a 1d6 bonus for the next attack roll and ability check. So you could try it out. Who are you going to inspire? I'm going to inspire the Mind Flayer. <laughs> guess I'll inspire you. Can you use it on yourself? Or I'm just kind of curious if it has to be an ally. Uh, it seems to be just you guys. Okay. Then you use it on me. And this is how Jinx and I have been fighting over the many years. Are you inspired? Yeah. So inspired. So, so Jinx plays music behind <laughs> me while I go smash bad guys. Oh, I miss. You missed him. So there is a, a trophy, you know, a trophy on the PlayStation and achievements on the PC for uh, killing that guy over there. The like mind player? No, not the mind player. Uh, the general guy. I oh, read his name. Oh, that guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Cambion dude. Mm -hmm. uh, Commander Zonk. And so yeah, there's achievement for doing it and plus you can pick up his really good weapon as well. And so it's something we could try and do, but you have to do it within the 15 turns before the, the Nautiloid crashes. And that is a lot of time to do it. Fury, I am dead. That's something I'm considering doing. You bow, or you break. Now you notice we don't have a lot of abilities here at the start, but that will change. We eventually get more stuff to do. kind of want to push this guy. That's not how you do it, though. I don't know if it would let me push him, but uh, we need to know where all these abilities are here. Here we go. And shove him. Yeah, I just want to shove him just because. <laughs> <laughs> so you can use that to like shove enemies off of cliffs and stuff. It's pretty useful overall. I'm so concerned about being shoved and kicked and tossed. Because we're tiny. <laughs> yeah. Like you can pick up, you know, smaller uh, races and then chuck them. And so, yeah, it's definitely a concern being smaller as we are. Oh, but pushing it made it so that Shadowheart can't can't hit him, but that's okay. Rude, Lysel. Uh, so let me just take a look and see what abilities we have here as Shadowheart. I don't know if she starts with that bow. We can also use our Sacred Flame, though. I noticed that they seem to pass the, the save a lot on that. Yeah, we don't want to use the Gaiden Bolt on, on that guy. Since he's almost dead. Maybe we'll use it. Can we reach him? Might have to move forward just a little bit. But yeah, let's use it on the commander's lock. Yeah, we're really... We're, we just got a critical hit. We're really taking this health down. Yeah, I almost feel like we should try and take him out. Now, I think we might have to fight... I don't know if we have to fight the mind player in that case, but he should be pretty weak at that point. Yeah, because they just sit there hitting on each other, don't they? Yeah, you yeah, smacking each other around a little bit. Alright, so I also can't reach, but that's okay. Generally what you want to do when you can't reach, and if you don't need that bonus action, is to go ahead and do a jump to it. Didn't want to see what abilities we also have. We have the Inquisitor's Might here. The Divine Sense. So this is be useful, I think, because I believe these are like Celestials or Fiends or whatever. I think they're Fiends. So yeah, I think that would apply to get an advantage on him. Of course, he's really weak, so we don't want to use that. Uh, we're just going to jump to him. So that we get nice and close to him. Um, then we're going to smack him with our hammer. It's like, how do you jump so far and run so slow? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, continue to move forward here. And then enter turn. Alright, so the M shot me. Bastard. Alright, so Jinx is the only one who didn't move very far forward. Yeah. Did you forget to move? No, I just didn't. I'm not gonna <laughs> go running out in front of everybody. 
thinks it's gonna stay in the back. <laughs> That's how she fights. Well, you might not be able to hit anything now. Yeah, I couldn't. Well, you could have used uh, your action to do something there. Yeah, I would have used it to... I don't know if you had any spells or anything that you could have done. Generally, you want to always use your actions, Jinx, if you, uh, if you can. Uh, so, can... Can he jump? He can. Alright, so we want... To try and jump up close. And he's not going to move that far. What about over here? Can he get to him? Yeah, everything's a little bit too far for him. He just can't move very far. So we'll just push forward here. And I don't think he has any abilities or anything outside of those claws. Could use the dash, but then you wouldn't have an action, so it's kind of irrelevant. I don't think he has any other abilities. kind of limited. Alright, and then with Lizelle... Let me just take a look at what abilities she has available to her at the start. So we got that second win. So for uh, healing yourself, astral knowledge as well for a proficiency skill bonus. We'll probably want to use the, the rush attack. Yeah, we'll use the rush attack. So we'll probably need to move a little bit closer to do that. He does have a high defense. Let me just use it on the imp here. Let my name be known. And so that's cool. Noise. And she still has the ability to get close here, so yeah, we'll move over this way. Are we gonna try to kill that guy? I feel like we should, because we've got his health so low already. It's already at 81. And again, you get this, you see that flaming sword he has? Mm -hmm. That would be awesome to oh, you have. you get to keep that? Yeah, you can pick it up and use it. And so I think we should attempt to, to destroy him because we got lucky with that critical hit. And so we're in a much better position here. And so let's go ahead and have her do, I guess, another Guiding Bolt. She has one spell slot left. But yeah, I'd prefer to use it against this guy over anything else that we're going to be facing. Get out of the way, balls. Though it is a very low chance of hitting. Hmm. Yeah, maybe better to use it on these next enemies that are about to come up. And instead, does she have a bow? I don't actually know if she's equipped with a bow here. Let me just take a look. If she has a ranged weapon or not. No. Okay, so yeah, she does not... Lizelle has one. Yeah. yeah, she does not have the ranged weapon, but we could give her a crossbow. Though that did take her action. Yeah, so unfortunately we used the action there. All right, well, that's fine. We'll be able to use it for the next turn. Uh, so one thing I like to do, let me just see, there's, is there any uh, button that changes your weapon up? Let's take a look. There's got to be a button, right? Like the switching? To switch weapons yeah. to make this easier? Because I like to always switch to melee weapons, to always have the melee weapon on, so that if anybody moves by you, of course, that's not going to happen in this one, but it's a good habit to have, so that if anybody moves by you, you can have a reaction and smack them. So we need to figure out how to do that. There's got to be a... You'd think there'd be a quick button for it. So I'm not seeing anything in here, guys, for being able to easily just switch weapons. Of course, you can do your main hand attack. Maybe just selecting that would be enough. No, it won't let you select it because we don't have an action. Hmm, that kind of sucks. Because, yeah, that's uh, something pretty important to be able to do, to be able to switch back to your melee weapon. It's very useful. Hmm. But yeah, there clearly doesn't seem to be an ability to do that, and that's unfortunate. Alright, so that's a real bummer. Maybe if you do it in the... Let me just take a look here, guys. You know what? Actually, hold up. Nope, oh, that's combat log. <laughs> Maybe you could do it in here. If you just select that. Nah, yeah, that's not going to work. Alright, so unfortunately it doesn't seem to be any way to do it. Uh, on the console. Maybe there is and I just can't figure it out, but uh, that's a bummer. Alright, so let's see if we can't get a little bit closer to that guy. Well, let me see if he's got any abilities besides our ranged attack. What you might want to do. We can use the Inquisitor's Might when we get close to him. That'd be helpful. But yeah, I don't think we can get close enough. I'll double check with the jump. Let's see if that'll be enough. 
Oh yeah. All right, so we'll just jump up close to him. And I suppose we'll have Jinx hit the button. So your goal will be to go, uh, you know, get as close as you can without getting too close. So probably like right here at the stairs. Mm -hmm. And don't get any closer. So we can try and get this guy killed here. Uh, not a good chance to hit because of his high defense, but we're still going to go ahead and use our ability here. If we can, it requires a bonus action, so it will not allow us to. But we might have some other bonuses here. We got the concussive smash, and we had the backbreaker. All right, we'll try the concussive smash here. Smack it in the head. It was a critical hit, oh, nice. and it was dazed. We're getting very good luck here. Yeah. For a let's play. Suspicious. Yeah, very suspicious. All right, so Jinx's turn. So yeah, I would just keep on moving forward, and then you can like shoot at him with your bow or with your uh, crossbow as you go. Maybe do you have a uh, any special abilities with that crossbow, like a piercing strike or anything? I don't think so. I think you should have something. Every weapon generally has some type of bonus. Hmm. Nope. Yeah, you have a piercing shot right there. Shot. Yeah. See, I'll do that. Maybe give him a gaping wound here. Wow, yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting really good luck here. I wonder if they didn't make this fight easier. Maybe. From when I played it, because it generally does not go like this at all. First of all, you miss far more often. They just want you to get your confidence up before they tear it down. Yeah, like a miss like that is what you generally see. <laughs> you see a lot of those. Time to strike. All right, so somebody's gonna actually have to help Jinx with those enemies over there. I guess she won't be able to fight them all alone. Maybe. A sharp shooter. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have Lizelle go help Jinx out. On the move. <laughs> before they strike okay so that'll result in the next enemies coming so we have uh, two more imps and another one of those lesser hell wars but she's already used her action so we're just gonna have her stay here I guess shadow heart could have helped you out over here too forgot about her On my way. I don't know if she'll have the range with that crossbow to take these guys out oh, yeah she will Aww. yeah she missed I forgot we had that spell slot too, so we want to use that on the next turn. Never a dull moment. And then, oh, it's my turn. Okay, so I guess we'll go ahead and let's see if we can't hit him with the. Oh, damn it! I hit the triangle, oh, no. so I skipped my turn on accident. <laughs> I was trying to hit the square there. All right, so that was unfortunately a wasted turn. Damn, that sucks. Expect some of that to happen, guys, as we learn the the controller. That's something that you like never have happen on accident on PC. Yeah, just accidentally hitting the wrong Yeah, button. like, but it's part of playing with the controllers. Should I shoot him? Well, if you can't hit any of the other ones, then yeah. Unless you're wanting like buff somebody or whatever. Yeah, you're not going to hit them. They're yeah. too far. I'll just shoot him. Maybe I'll hit him. Nope. Do you have any offensive spells? Mm, just no. nope, just healing. Okay. Yeah. You could have healed me. Uh, you still have your bonus action, in fact, if you want to heal me. I'll whisper sweet nothings in your ear. Thank you kindly. There you go. All right, so the mind flayer is doing a lot of that damage to him as well. Yeah, he's almost dead. We're doing pretty good here, getting this guy's health taken down, though it doesn't look like us is likely to hit him. Now when we stunned him, that's what really helped us there on getting the better rolls since we had the advantage over him. Yeah, I'm curious if Flyzel is even going to be needed against these these three. Or if you and uh, Shadowheart can deal with it. I guess you could shoot one shot and then let you guys deal with the rest. Watch us die. Alright, so we're gonna have to switch. Yeah, there's gotta be a button for. Other than this, 
We're switching weapons. And she missed. So that's unfortunate. And yeah, it's just a shame that there's no way to make an ungroup her. Yeah, I don't know guys, might have to look it up and see if there's any way to to change the weapon. Okay, so let's just go ahead and turn. All right, so Lizelle is gonna use her ability here. The guiding bolt. We're gonna use it against the lesser Hellsbore. And kill him. Critical. Right, excellent. So he's yeah, been like dealt this with. fight is going too well. Yeah, it's going really well. It's surprising. It did not go that way for me. Like it wasn't difficult, but it wasn't easy either. Yeah, I mean it's not a difficult uh, session here, but I've never seen it go so well before. All right, so we're gonna use the Inquisitor Might. This is our our bonus action and our Channel Oath Charge. So we're gonna use that on ourselves. And then we're gonna smack him. I think you just smack him, and then it does the the da damage, adds the uh, extra three radiant damage, and can daze the enemies for one turn. And we did hit him. Okay. So we still got 12 turns left, and he's only got 28 health. So again, I think we're gonna be able to do this. Take him out. Because there's the only the, the two imps left. <laughs> All right, so it's Jinx's turn. So what are you gonna do? I'm gonna shoot him. I do have the vicious mockery. It can hurt someone's feelings. <laughs> I think we should probably just take him out unless you just really want to mock them. Is that a bonus action? No, it's a full action. I see. Make fun of him. I mean, would yeah, give him the disadvantage. That could be useful. <laughs> Oh, wow. That's wow. gross. Like the insult? So yucky. That's along the lines of what I said to that guy's wife. Mm-hmm. Yep. You can see how we got kicked out of the town. <laughs> All, right, All so I said turn was a goat, there? though. That was way worse. A playground? <laughs> yeah, so unfortunately, us isn't able to hit anything. Such a low percentage here on hitting. All right, so I feel like you guys can probably take care of those two. I mean, yeah, they're just imps. So let's hurry up and get, although Commander Zalk's just about dead as well. Yeah, he's just about dead, guys. Uh, we'll go ahead and move over there anyway. Let's let Lizel get a hit on him. She gets cranky if she doesn't smack anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. And she missed, so it doesn't matter. All right, so let's go ahead and end her turn here. And then she's gonna have to, we're at a disadvantage here when it comes to using a ranged weapon because he's in melee range. And so we need to use the, uh, her, uh, whatever she has on, on her. Does she have a I think it's a mace. mace? Yeah, a little bit of mace. So yeah, we'll do the, the main uh, attack here. We need to just see if there's anything else we might want to do. We got the concussive smash. I guess we'll do that. It'll probably kill it anyways, but. Oh, it didn't. All right, so it's gonna still be uh, dazed here. Fire bolted us. Fiery bolt. All right, so I think I've already used all of my abilities against this thing. I don't think we have anything else. He's not doing so good. Yeah, he's just about dead anyways. So yeah, I think we'll just probably smack it. And we can't get an advantage. No, actually, let's go ahead and do that. And then that should allow us to make sure that we hit it. All right, so he's only got seven health left, and he's dazed again. I feel like we've got a really good crew here or something. Yeah, we're awesome. I suppose having the, the extra party member plays a role too, doesn't it? Yeah. He's just got another party member doing damage. All right, so only one imp remaining. We still got 10 turns. The commander here barely has any points. I believe the mind flayer attacks you. I'm not sure though, once the commander's dead. Yeah. yeah, so now we're fighting the mind flayer, but we got that trophy, devils in the details. 
And so that is for defeating the Commander's Ulk, so I wanted to get that here on the PlayStation. And now we gotta deal with the Mind Flayer, but you can see he's heavily damaged as it is. So he shouldn't be too difficult to get take out. Ass. And so yeah, we got Lyzel coming in here and smacking him. Actually, let's use one of her special abilities. Uh, let's see here what she's all got access to. Did she already use everything? Yeah, she might have already used everything. Maybe it was the Bardic Inspiration. I feel like, yeah. It was that song you sung. It was pretty epic. <laughs> yeah, he's already just about dead. Uh, let's Pummel Strike him as well. Pummel Strike is a uh, bonus action attack. And we missed. Alright, so we don't want to get too close. Because we still have to pick up this item. That sword. We need to have a... Uh, one of our characters do that. And so let's just do a ranged attack, I think. Maybe we don't want to do the main hand attacks. I don't want to get too close to it. Oops, ended my turn. <laughs> God <laughs> damn, man. Because I've been playing another game not that long ago that used the triangle for the radio menu. Yeah. So I keep trying to hit triangle to get to the radio menu instead of the, the R2. So yeah, I'm probably gonna continue to, to hit that on accident, guys. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and smack this guy. I feel like circle should and we be missed. the intern. Can or, like, I loot this guy? Oh, he smacked me. Come a little closer. Oh, he knocked me on the ground. I'm dead. Oh, uh, what? Yeah. Oh, wow. When he smacked me with that extra attack. Uh, these are these cambians that come in if you take long enough. And so yeah, somebody needs to help my character up. Oh, jeez. Um, I would say don't heal me. Don't heal you? Well... Yeah, I would say you should do an attack. Unless you can heal me from far away where you're at. I can't. With your bonus action? I gotta come touch you, because I already healed you. What do you mean? Don't you have the... You still have your, uh... Your ranged one. Oh. How were you thinking you weren't able to do that? I don't know. Yeah, you still have I a... I thought that was a one-time thing. No, no, no. You can use it as long as you have spell slots. So do you want me to heal you? Yeah, yeah. Get me back up. Get back in the fight, Jinx. And don't heal uh, him. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So I'm back, but not for long. Not a lot of health going on right here. And then I would use your attack on that imp. Try and get him Shooter. taken out. All right, All right, he's dead. So yeah, the only thing that's left now is killing this mind flare here. I'm like really scared he's killing us all. Yeah, the mind flare is kind of a problem. I'm just trying to pick up the weapon and then we're done. But the problem is <laughs> that the mind flare is taking this all out. Oh, you've been knocked out too, huh? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, this is kind of a problem. So I guess what we can do, she doesn't have any spell slots, so she can only help up or chuck a potion. Chucking potions does require an action, though. So does helping up. Hmm. Is there anybody still alive? Just me? Yeah, I won't be able to kill him in the one hit. push the button. <laughs> I'm wondering if I can't get him taken out. Is Praetorian stunned or anything? No, but uh, us is. Okay, so us will not get an attack. I'm going to just try and kill him. Let's see if this works. I think this is the best way to go, because he's going to get another turn, and he'll just knock us all out. And uh, Praetorian can't do it on his own. So I feel like this is the only way to do this, is to attack him. So we can either do it with the bow, where we'll have a... Uh... Nope, that's not the bow. So i got to make sure I don't actually hit, accidentally hit the triangle. We are talking all about all that smack that we were doing so well. <laughs> we pushed our luck. So it's only a 45% chance of hitting with the bow. It's not great, guys. So let's try with a a firebolt, see if it's any higher. It's 40%, so it's actually lower. Damn. So we're just gonna have to risk a, a bow shot and see if that does the trick. And yeah, I don't know what else we do here. The sacred flame, that one's easy for them to uh, avoid. It's generally, yeah, it's actually a smaller percentage here. Yeah, it's generally just easily avoided. 
All right, so yeah, we'll just do it with a bow and just hope that the 45% chance results in a hit. Because I don't think Praetorian can do enough damage on his own, if he can even hit. Oh, we did it. <laughs> <laughs> he only has one health. All right, so Is let's... Is it enough to kill everyone in the party, though? So let's go ahead and heal. Well, Praetorian still has a hit. A hit left, so we're going to actually let her heal real quick. And then maybe get her close to the module so she can hit it if she needs to. And then he might be too far away to do damage to us. All right, so let's end her turn. Now it's Praetorian's turn. Do not miss. He doesn't have an action. Really? Yeah. No. <laughs> he didn't get an action. I don't know why he didn't get an action. But yeah, that's unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Damn. Here. Just push him. <laughs> yeah, I can push him, but... Oh, I can use my potion of speed. That'll give me an action. You I didn't really heal. want to use it here, but... Yeah, but if I heal, you could see he might be able to kill me when it. He gets the next attack, so... Yeah, I think if I do this, I, I'll get an attack and get a chance to smack him once. And, uh, I basically have to hit. 55% chance. Come on, Praetorian. Oh, oh my damn god. Damn it. Alright, so th now we're in trouble, guys, since we did miss there. We're in a pickle. Yeah, we're in a bit of a pickle. He'll probably kill Praetorian, and that leaves only... Shadow Heart available with two Cambians on the way. So we are in a bit of a bit of a pickle here, guys. And there's no other uh yeah, there's no bonus action, nothing we can do. The Cambians are coming. Now they are enemies to the Mind Flayers. Maybe they'll attack him instead. Or maybe the Mind Flayer will attack them. Maybe. I don't think so, because Praetorian's up close. So Praetorian's mm, down. Nice. All right, so that's unfortunate. We have no spell slots. I can throw a potion and try and heal both Lysel and Praetorian, or I can try and shoot them, but the Cambians are on the way, so yeah. I feel like you gotta try and heal them. Uh, so that's what we'll do. Uh, we could also just make our way here, but then we didn't pick the sword up, which was the whole purpose of doing this. So let me just see if we can't do this, guys. So, I don't know if you can do it through here. No. So we're going to have to go into our options here. The Shadow Heart has the one potion. That's all she got. So let's throw it and hope that she can heal these guys. I didn't even know you could do that. Throw potions? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and if you do it right, you can hit multiple people. See how we brought both of them up? Yeah. And so that's going to give them two turns now. Probably should have did that originally, but it is what it is. Um, so I don't think there's anything for her bonus action to be used for. Let me just double check, though. Okay, yeah, she doesn't have any spell slots. So yeah, she doesn't have anything that she can do here. We can move her slightly closer, but I kind of want her to get Jinx up. I'd like us to all be alive. Although those Cambians are going to change that soon. Uh, so they always want to end her turn. And then you would think with three people we'd be able to get the kill here. Us is going to get the kill. Yep, us got the kill. Good job, little guy. Good, good job. Saved us all. Alright, so let's move him over here in the hope that nobody gets hit by the Cambians. But yeah, it looks like we're going to pull out a win here at the last moment. Hopefully. So we're going to have her pick up the weapon... I guess it's going to be on him, so let's pick up both of these. This is the scale mail and the uh, Everburn blade. So that's what we did all this for here, guys. <laughs> all for that. It better be good. And we'll also get the Mind Flayer looted. And then because we won't... A little spoiler here, but because we won't have her for a little while, we're actually going to go ahead and see if I can't... Try not to hit the wrong buttons here. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to see if we can't send those uh, to Praetorian. Anything that she has that's not equipped. So we want the Everburn Blade sent to Praetorian. And that armor that she got as well. The Scale Mail. Send that to Praetorian. They give us all the stuff. Yeah. And then, since we used all our potions, 
fighting this guy. Let's split that and then send one of these to Shadow Heart here. All right, so that looks pretty good. All right, so we'll get her moving forward as far as she can go. Can she loot this guy? <laughs> she can. All right, so let's send this to our character as well. Pick up them shinies. Oops, trying to get her to move forward a little bit. All right, there we go. And Victorian's going to run his little... <laughs> with his little feet <laughs> trying to get over here. Oh yeah, he's got the haste, so oh, he can actually, right. he can finish this up. All right, so yeah, we'll get out of here. Although he doesn't have any more actions. I was gonna think I'd be able to dash over here, but we cannot, we don't have any actions left. All right, so I think that's all we're gonna do here. We could heal up, but it's not necessary. And we'll see how close they can get. They dashed, so that's their action, but they are gonna be within hitting distance the next turn. Luckily, that should be our last turn here. Can somebody help me? Oh yeah, we still need to get you up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll get you up here in a minute. I'm just Thanks. a little dead. Smack him. Good job, us. Proud of you. All right, so Liza will come get you up here. Oh, can anybody else do it? <laughs> <laughs> so make sure all of our characters are up and alive. And uh, can we just switch straight over to him so we can just end this? Let's just get out of here, guys. Interact with this. The Helm's alien transponder. You've made it in time. As you wake, the tadpole squirms in your skull. Other than the infection, you're more or less intact. A miracle, given everything you've been through, but it'll all be for nothing if you don't find help soon. The tadpole is a death sentence, and the clock is ticking. You need a cure. The tadpole is a death sentence, and the clock is ticking. You need a cure. All right, guys, so we are finally into the game. That's the tutorial section. Extra long first episode here, but I did want to get through the tutorial. That was my goal when I did the uh, 
that short PC series as well to at least get onto the beach here. Uh, you'll see a, a body over there. That's that's Shadow Heart. So we'll go talk to her uh, next episode. Uh, but yeah, we uh, have finally uh, landed here into the the full game. We survived. We survived. We got off the ship. We got goodies. And yeah, it's crazy just seeing this view. Uh, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, just I'm noticing things I didn't notice while playing on the PC because again, it was that that top down view. And it just looks fantastic on the big TV as well. Uh, so yeah, really excited for this series. I absolutely love this game. This is a game that I could see playing like over and over again. Uh, you know, I did the two early access playthroughs and then you know doing the full uh, able to play through the full game. And again, I'm about to 130 hours in and still not at the end. I'm expecting it's going to take me about 160 hours just based on the way I play. Uh, but getting close to the end, I'm like in the uh, the third act. And yeah, it's just so, so good, guys. And it just never really falls off. Uh, I enjoyed everything that I've played so far. And uh, we'll talk more about uh, the game and the things we've enjoyed about it as we uh, do the Let's Play. Uh, but yeah, this will have to be the end of this first episode, which again is, is quite a long uh, first episode here. Hope you did enjoy it. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. If you're looking for any links, then check out the description of any of our videos. You'll find links to our PayPal, Patreon, and Teespring store if you'd like to help support the channel. you also find a link to our Discord if you'd like to join our community. And finally, find links to all of our social media if you'd like to follow us on those. Uh, if you're looking for anything to watch while you wait for the next episode, check out the front page of our channel. we got a ton of videos all sorted by genre, play a wide variety of different types of games. And I have done some Boulder Skate coverage uh, on the PC. I had like a, a short Let's Play uh, that I did. I think it was about eight videos or so. Also did these videos where I looked at some of the different choices you can make in the game. You know, if you make one choice, what uh, the outcome of that is, or if you make the other choice. Uh, so we did a few of those different videos. There's not any commentary on those. It's just showing the uh, the cutscenes. Uh, so some of those, some people found those pretty interesting. Also have uh, one guide uh, for a particular uh, really important character in the game and how to find him. And I've been considering doing some more guides, uh, particularly with the, the combat, since it is a difficult combat. I know a lot of people have problems with it, and so I thought about putting together a guide on uh, you know, how to win some of the more challenging uh, battles. So yeah, you'll see more Boulder's Gate coverage here on the channel. Uh, but yeah, you should be able to find something that you'd enjoy watching while you wait for episode 2. do hope to see you on that video, and thanks for watching.